Well, hello friends, Mark Holmes here with my buddy Cowboy Joe Boo, and as always, thank you guys for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. Without you guys, this doesn't work. Let's get open for business, and let's wake up my football gods up here. And this is it, guys. By Friday, every one of the 32 teams will be in training camp. August 1st, <clears throat> Hall of Fame game. I know it doesn't mean much, okay? They're not going to show anything, of course. Probably won't even have starters playing, but listen. After the offseason, I've been happy to watch the dog run around carrying a football in the backyard. That's how much I have missed football. And we're on the cusp. Teams have rookies already reporting. Teams are already practicing right now. So, if you're not ready... I don't know what to tell you because we have made it. We have survived the long NFL season. And we've got a lot of stuff and a lot of questions that are going to be answered in training camp this year. Um, one of the big ones is going to be, and we should know hopefully right away, Travis Frederick. If Travis Frederick is back to full speed, that is major. Because you know what was great yesterday? Yesterday... I have been working like crazy whenever I have any free time, either I'm cooking keto, trying to lose some weight because I'm a fat ass, or I've been working on work, and when I'm not working on work, then I'm trying to do stuff to improve everything and get ready for the football season. So I've done my outdoor kitchen, so that way when we have people over, I can cook for a lot of people without a problem. So that, you know, the outdoor kitchen is just about finished. The decks up there is done. I've been working on back here. I just got to get a TV to go outside and things. And we're going to upgrade the furniture that's down here. So when we have company, it's going to be great. And I've been doing some subtle things of, you know, changing some of the wiring around here in the set to make it a little smoother and a little easier. Um for everything we're going to do. So like I said, I've got some more work I need to do, and I'm going to continue to do it. What was fun, as much as everybody is down on the Dallas Cowboys, it's amazing how much footage of the Dallas Cowboys they show on NFL Network. Yesterday, they had on Week 14, Cowboys versus Eagles. And um, that was a hell of a game. Watching that game put into perspective everything that is the Dallas Cowboys. The defense played pretty well. Now, we had some mistakes. Dak had a couple of interceptions and things there. Had a fumble. Our offensive line, we lost Zach Martin. So from our great wall of Dallas, we ended up having Tyron Smith, Connor Williams filling in for Zach Martin, Joe Looney, um, Connor McGovern, and Lyle Collins as our starting offensive line. We had Dak, we had Zeke, and we had Amari. The amazing thing about this, and this is where a lot of people who talk about my quarterback and stuff and say that we don't go down the field with the football, it's dink and dunk. And the Cowboys, you know, it stinks. You know, we're, we should be throwing the ball, you know, tons. You got to understand that the Dallas Cowboys are different than any other team. Their philosophy is different. Their philosophy is a throwback. Now, that's going to evolve some with Kellen Moore. But understand this. Because, you know, around 2012, 2013, our defense was not good. The offensive philosophy shifted for a couple of reasons. One, Tony Romo was getting injured, and so they ended up having DeMarco Murray running the ball more. But what they learned was, if we can keep the ball away from the other team, control the time of possession, take our time scoring, then it gives less opportunities for other teams. And then they start to panic because they look and say, damn, we haven't had the ball in the first quarter's almost over. We need to hurry up and score. And it makes them one-dimensional. It also makes your defense fresh. If you know that they're going to pass the ball and your defense is fresh, you're turning the, the wolves a, a, a loose. You're going after the quarterback. And that is a winning formula. And that formula has worked for the Dallas Cowboys. Because understand, we have won the division 
three of the last five years. Let me say it again because, you know, I, I know we haven't won the Super Bowl. I know that. And I know that, you know, giant fans out there and YouTubers are talking about how the Dallas Cowboys stink and they haven't done shit since the, the 90s. And, I you know, I'm, I'm, I have to agree with them on that. But you know what? We own the New York Giants' ass. We own Eli Manning. If it wasn't for that 2016 where you got two victories, you look at since you won your last Super Bowl, Cowboys have literally owned that ass, as well as everybody else in the NFC East. Using that philosophy. And it was no more on display than in that game because, you know, I was upstairs ready to go take a shower and stuff, and I'm watching, and it's going into overtime. And the time of possession popped up on there. Dallas Cowboys, 40 minutes. Eagles, 20 minutes. Two to one. When you can have that kind of a time of possession, that other defense is worn the F out. And the amazing thing was watching the drive in the fourth quarter. And I would love to actually bring that to you um, in, excuse me, in overtime. Because it was some places in there, third and nine, where we just had to get it. And it was a great play because they had triples on the left. And they did kind of a natural pick with Cole Beasley. And you had Amari Cooper going right across the middle. It's a timing route. You see Dak over here look out. You see them go ahead, boom, and he's thrown to that spot. Hits Amari Cooper in stride, boom, first down. And then you see Zeke Elliott showing up the football. You saw Blake Jarwin catching a pass. And this methodical drive in overtime literally took up almost the whole overtime. It's not pretty. It's not fantasy football numbers where you're seeing four or 500 yards and your fantasy football team is. But i got to be honest with you. I don't give a rat's ass about fantasy numbers. To me, there's something basically wrong with fantasy football that I'm rooting for a guy that might be in the Eagles or the Redskins or the Giants team. I, it's, I, I just Maybe I'm just too old because in my day, you did not want to do, have anything to do with the enemy. It's not like today where guys go in the off season and work out and changing jerseys and smiling up and no, it was war, and I still have that war mentality that I ain't you know, screw that. But be that as it may, that's that's a, that's a subject for another day. So don't ask me if I do fantasy football because I don't. But watching that drive, watching that team, that overtime. You could see how worn out the Eagles' defense was. You could see how in command Dak Prescott was with that offense. You could see how determined the Dallas Cowboys were to win that game. And that was when they had already gone on a five-game win streak. And that, my friends, is the Dallas Cowboys' identity. And you can hear all these talking heads and everything else that tell you, well, they don't challenge the ball down the field. But listen, when you can chew up the ground, when you can take time off the clock, when you can control the time of possession, it's winning football. And that works. And that's why the philosophy's changed in football because of the rules. Defenders, I get it, defenders can't touch a receiver. And generally speaking, if you end up having deep passes, what's going to happen is either the quarterback's going to get touched and you get a flag, unless it's Cam Newton or Dak Prescott, or you're going to get a flag from the deep back touching the receiver, first down, or you might get a completion. But when you do that, you're not taking time off the clock. And we've had so many of those games where we had Tony Romo as the gunslinger. And we're lighting the ball down the field. Boom, we score. Problem is, is we'd end up leaving more time for the other team to come back and beat us. And that's where the advantage of having an offense 
that can methodically go down the field, score, is a better bet than just lighting it up. Now, that's not to say you don't want to be able to, because sometimes you're going to need to score quick, and you're going to need to get the ball again and score again quick. But ideally, the Dallas Cowboys offense is suited to be that ball control offense. We'll see if that philosophy is the one that's able to win the Super Bowl. But I look at other teams because same thing when you look at now how New Orleans, using Alan Ben Camara, they're, not, they're, they're good on the field, but they control the clock and they control the tempo of the game. Same thing with the Rams. So you have to look at that in totality. So with that being said, I got to get ready to get my butt to work. I gotta go take care of getting the ceiling finished over here and then I gotta get back and do some work in the shop and stuff. And of course, tonight, nine o'clock Eastern, we'll be here live talking to you, great fans. And of course, we'll be getting ready for training camp. Um, as always, friends, I wanna thank you all for watching, commenting, subscribing, and being part of the Joe Boo Sports Report. I'll see you soon.